It's pretty common knowledge that endgame PvP gear in New World can cost an insane amount of money. But just how much money do you actually need to spend in order to be competitive in PvP? Well, I wanted to try a challenge to figure this out. So I set up a character with nothing but 10k gold in their pocket to sort of mimic a fresh level 60, and I wanted to buy gear and put together a build on this character to see if it could be competitive in Outpost Rush against the other people who are running that 625 best in slot. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, of course, set up my character. I've got my 10k gold, no items or consumables in my inventory. The only thing that I still have is that blue cannon heart rune, but I guess we'll just leave that there because it is a quest item. So I hit the trade post and the first thing I want to buy is a rapier and a fire staff as that is the weapon combo that I'm going to use and I do prefer to purchase the weapons first to see what perks I can get on them. The fire staff, I definitely want an empowering fireball fire staff. I managed to find this bad boy keen empowering fireball for 20 gold. Absolute steal. It's not like it's a best in slot staff but it is not bad and for the price this is definitely what I'm looking for and an omnidirectional evade vicious rapier for 14 gold oh my god that is such a good price this is definitely going to work next up i'm going to get myself some jewelry the amulet i would love a health and divines maybe even stamina recovery the ring uh kind of up in the air i wouldn't mind a keen awareness at least though but we'll see what we can get damage wise and then for the necklace definitely want to get a healthy toast and refreshing toast perk combo Right away, I managed to find a fantastic Health and Divine's Necklace, only 200 gold. It's got the attributes I need too, so I'm going to grab that right away. And then afterwards, I managed to find a Refreshing Toast and Healthy Toast Earring, and it's only 50 gold, a fantastic price, actually kind of a steal too. So far, everything has been really cheap, but this is where I ran into my first issue, the ring. There were no cheap rings to buy, but I did manage to find a fire damage and invigorating punishment ring for 2,200 gold. This is a pretty good ring. It's two offensive perks in one, and 2k is a really good price for this. So yeah, definitely the way to go right now. And now all that's left is the armor pieces. The perks that I want are resilient and elemental aversion or freedom. I would also like to get shirking energy on the legs if I can find a piece that has it. But outside of that, really just the defensive perks are the ones I'm after. You could add some weapon perks in here if you want it for your particular build too. Since I'm going to play a light armor build, I can choose either light or medium armor pieces in my build. And I'm going to start off by picking the legs because if I go with the light or medium legs, it will impact what other pieces I can pick. And I want to get legs that have that shirking energy perk. Right away, managed to find myself a cheap pair of Shirking Energy and Resilient Legs, and they are in medium, meaning that I'm going to have to buy myself a light chest and one more piece of medium armor to go with this build. Now, I am noticing that the price of the armor itself is a little bit more expensive than the weapons or the jewelry was. I do manage to find a Freedom Resilient hat for 1k though. 1.5k for some Resilient Elemental Aversion boots. That is pretty best in slot for a budget build, so I will take it. And I managed to find some gold gloves, resilient elemental aversion, plus a bum trait. 2k for those, not too bad. And surprisingly, the chest piece is the only piece of gear where I am not going to get my desired perks on. I had to settle for a resilient refreshing chest, so not terrible, but yeah, definitely better gear for the 7.5k I've dumped into it than I thought I would get. But I'm not quite done yet though, I'm going to have to put some gems on all of this gear. Of course, buy myself the potions, the regens, and the mana potions I'm going to need. And last but not least, get the food and the honing stones that I need for this build too. So I quickly go and I purchase all of this stuff, and there we go guys. This is the finished product. I'll be honest, the gear is definitely not bad. It's a lot better than I thought it would be, and... I've been playing in Iron Man for a long time, so I'm used to playing with bad gear. This is not too shabby at all. I guess all that's left to do is put it to the test. Oh no, one last thing that I forgot to do is set my attribute points. You do want to wait until you're in Outpost Rush to do this because the gear that I'm wearing is going to get scaled up. That being said, I didn't have quite enough gold to set it. I had to pull just a few hundred coins out of the bank, so I kind of screwed up uh, the whole 10k thing, but... That's fine, let's get into that PvP commentary. 
All right, so right off the bat, of course, I go to the enemy outpost and uh, gonna try the build out, see how she feels back here. We've got a few enemy players up on top of the ramp here. I start dropping the fireball on him, try to go for the flourish and finish. Unfortunately, that guy's just out of range, but the fireball alone did quite a lot of damage to him. And I missed the flesh to get up the staircase. But a big explosion on the burnout. And again, I half health that guy with a huge combo there. And uh, I come back around the corner and try to start feeding him those fireballs. I missed the fireball there, but this guy is holding nice and still for me. So just a quick flourish and finish. And he ends up going down. And I look behind me and we do have one more friendly player that's come into the fight here. So I'm going to turn and try to start putting pressure on this healer. So uh, he at least can't heal his friendly player there that the uh, other guy is fighting. And I just keep the pressure on with the rapier. Switch to the fire staff. And now I go for a bit of a target shift on top of the archer. The burnout into the pillar of fire. Unfortunately, I missed the pillar. A quick retreat out the outside here. And I'm loving that divines on the necklace. Just uh, the additional healing power. Super nice. And there's a connection on the fireball to finish off that healer. And then I jump on top of the greatsword player. Another enemy player comes in here as well. And he spiked some good damage into them as the enemy players converged on me. I quickly heal up, pop back in. Pillar of Fire on this guy, go for the Rapier to give him the final poke, and the friendly player with the Blunderbuzz getting good damage as well. This guy comes charging in, I don't think he saw that his friend in here was dead already, so we managed to finish him off too. And just like that, we held their side of the outpost, we start flipping it, and there's a few of them piling up at the door, and both of us just feeding some AoEs with the Fire Staff. I decide to go outside, I go for the Burnout, into the Flesh, the Flurry, or the Flourish and Finish, and I managed to get the kill on this guy at the last moment with the cannon shot. And I quickly heal up, come back inside, and that right there is all I need to know. This build is definitely solid. This is definitely solid. I mean, I can tell I'm not in the absolute vis, but holy crap, do I feel effective. And uh, the enemy players start coming in here. I put big damage into him with the rapier. My friendly player there dropping some damage on him as well. The greatsword player comes to converge on top of me. I roll away, go for the fire staff gap close through everybody and then get back to a little bit of cover. I actually thought I'd taken a little bit more damage there. So I do manage to just very quickly heal up and I start throwing some fireballs into them. There looks to be six or seven players on the flag now. I go around the corner to get a better look and yeah, there's quite a few there. Flesh into this guy. Unfortunately, I didn't see him wind up that blunderbuss stun, so I eat it. Managed to uh, squeak out again, though, and quickly heal up. And then start feeding these guys some fire staff. Big damage with the fire staff fireball there. That guy actually at half health. But I take a lot of damage myself. An enemy player jumps off the edge, and he gets me with the great sword. And I just take a little bit too much damage there. He hits me with the explosive arrow, and down I go. And, well, I only did that single OPR, but that was really all I needed to do. Honestly, this build feels good. It is a lot easier to put together a viable and competitive PvP build than I thought it would be, and it costs a lot less to be competitive than I thought that it would. So, if any of you guys are looking to get into PvP, yeah, hopefully this helps it seem a little bit less daunting for you. If you guys want to catch me live, there's a link to my Twitch down below. Of course, check out my website, pvpnewworld.com, for written guides to all my builds. And if you have an awesome clip that you want to see in the New World Top 5, you can send that to Christopher at pvpnewworld.com. This show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. You can get a deal on your first purchase with the link down below. And last but not least, a massive thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon for supporting the show. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I hope to see you next time, and have a good night, everybody.